Artburn 2020. 2001, 2002. I was just painting things from the back of my uh, high school biology textbook because they looked cool. I think this is a blood clot. I think this was the year after I graduated OCAD, or maybe two years after. I had just bought a new airbrush and was trying to integrate that into my work to see how I'd like it. And I didn't. It's alright. This one is an acrylic on masonite where I had developed this technique of scraping the paint on and it would look really awesome in small pieces. And then I wanted to make a really big version, and this is where I learned that this technique does not work when scaled up. But it does work as fuel for a fire. A rare oil painting by me. This one is titled Testing New Color Indigo Early 2002. I forgot to hit record, so just pretend that you imagined me saying something very witty and hilarious before throwing that in the fire. During my time at OCAD, I only had one professor who I really didn't like. And uh, his big thing was that if you're an acrylic painter, you're wasting your money using acrylic paint. Just use white glue, it's totally the same thing. And at the time, I was uh, dumb enough to believe him, because I assumed that uh, professors know what they're talking about. Nope. Good to see that one, though. I really like that one. Ah, uh, it's not gonna last. Although white glue lasts about 10 years, and it's 15 years old, and it has lasted, so maybe... The teacher wasn't as wrong as I had just said he was. This isn't really a painting. I just had too much crap on my brush and needed to wipe it off on something. Goodbye, scrap masonite. Another one of those shiny texture paintings that don't work well at this scale. Goodbye, painting. I actually really like this one, but due to a flood it's got some mold and grossness on it, so into the fire it goes. I painted this on location at Georgian Bay when I was in high school. There it goes. This is a mix encaustic and acrylic painting where I would put down some melted wax and then do a stain of acrylic on the raw canvas and then another layer of wax. So I guess kind of like a batik on canvas. Canvas on fire. Oh, do you see how it's foaming up? July 1st, 2002. I believe this is my second ever oil painting. The uh, first one was a landscape. I thought I'd try an abstraction, kind of based on uh, some of Lauren Harris's weird attempts at abstraction, but with a different color scheme. And it is now moldy from a flood. The oil ones burn so much nicer. Never seen that before. This 
So this was a first semester of first year of OCAD project where um, we had to take a color wheel and make it interesting. So I uh, made, I guess, broken transparent color squares instead. And uh, I don't know why I've kept this one this long. <laughs> it's literally just one of those school assignments where even when I'm painting it, I'm not liking it. I feel bad for that masonite. It could have had a good painting put on it. Instead, it was a dumb assignment. Back when I lived in South Korea, there was a um, giant sports field stadium about a 10 minute walk from my house with a giant hiking trail up a mountain. And at the end of the trail was this really rough looking sketchy house. And I was always afraid to go on that trail. So I'd always reach that point and turn around and go back until I was with my friend Nate and I didn't want him to know that I was afraid, so we kept going together, and it was totally fine. And the trail after this part wasn't as nice as the first half, so I didn't really miss all that much. <laughs> and now that, now that you know the story, the painting doesn't have to continue to exist because the story is out there. Not that my paintings are usually about stories, but <laughs> it, it works for this one. This is from the same series as the last one, but I don't remember the story behind this one anymore. It was 2008. That's a long time ago now. So this was from a digital painting class. When would that have been? This would have been OCAD, so two, oh, 2004. So this is on a uh, digital printed banner. I was, it was a school assignment to incorporate painting with um, digital stuff. And for some reason it had to be figurative because the teacher's into that. And um, this is my first ever attempt at framing something that I had made. But I had no idea at all what I was doing. So I just used the reusable stretcher bars and literally screwed the masonite to the back of them and then painted it black. And it looks very cheap and junky, I think. So you're painting to learn, not to make good paintings. Are you really gonna burn that one, Cal? I, uh, do you think I shouldn't? I don't know. Okay. Because this is probably, out of all my paintings, the tracing part, I probably put more work into this than, if not any painting I've done ever. I actually don't know if this, I don't know if this one got moldy in the, no, it didn't. This one is, okay, if you like this one, we won't burn it. But where will I put it? We could put it in the fire. <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, I was... Yeah, I was putting so much work into this, and I was really liking some of the individual brush strokes, but then whenever I'd zoom out and look at it as a whole, it just wasn't working for me. I think these were all painted, like, a, a year before I figured out a cool trick that made the style work a lot better. This is an abstract wax one where I layered lots of different colors of wax and then just carefully scraped it all away to reveal this uh, interesting kind of texture here. There's nothing really wrong with this one that I hate about it. I just did two side by side and the other one's better and there's no reason to have two versions of almost the same thing. And it's wax so it will burn beautifully. Any second now. Wide angle lenses and very hot fires don't get along. You have to be stupidly close to get anything.
burns hot.